you know, life is not always perfect, you know, and sometimes life can get a little dark for some of us, right? Uh, or is it just me? Uh, but I'm so glad because even when I'm not good to myself, God is good to me. You can find a light that you don't expect, right? So I'm thankful for that. And uh, we're going to praise him all today. So y'all get ready for this reason. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. And feel free to stand and join me if you want. If you want to have your seat, that's fine as well. But just go with me there if that's okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on.
raise your hand. Don't be shy. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna start with Brother Tori. If you don't mind, give us a break of, of uh, how you hear about us, and we're gonna let you know you're welcome. Amen. So, so I'm, I'm. That's my big brother up there on the guitar. So he, yeah. well, uh, my little big brother. Little big brother. Uh, we're out from Missouri visiting my mom and Jack, yeah. her husband. And uh, so we made it out to the desert, and we want to come worship with you guys. So uh, we're excited. Amen. We want to welcome y'all all from Missouri. Amen. 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 Amen, everybody. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to begin. We thank God for Jesus. We believe that we are overcomers.
start with here I am to worship. Hallelujah. Does anybody know that song? Anybody presenting their body as a living sacrifice? Anybody giving it all over to the Lord on today? Hallelujah. I just want to take a second of worship. Hallelujah. And go where you go.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's good to see you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Is it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. 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 Listen, we are going to release our children into children's church. Now, everyone, we want you to go out the outer aisles. No one down the middle. Just turn around and go out the outer aisles and around to the middle door. Amen. And your teachers will meet you back there this morning. Amen. Amen. Now, make sure you learn something and come back and tell your parents and your, and your grandparents and everybody. Amen. Amen. We are going to prepare for the word, but we want you all to know that we are honoring our graduates right after the first day. So right after Bishop is done, we're going to stay seated for about 10 minutes, and we are going to honor them on today. Amen? Amen. 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 They worked hard. Amen. They deserve it. They worked hard. I'm sorry. They worked hard. Yeah. Thank you. 
celebrate with us, all right? There's barbecue for sale after service. Uh, now, Missouri, I don't know how y'all get down in the south for barbecue, but now here in California, we like to smoke meat a little bit too, so if y'all are hungry, please stick around and get some barbecue. And then finally, uh, uh, I'm saying this now because Brother Robert walked in. Uh, junior All-American football is about to kick off, and uh, uh, Brother Robert Noriega is one of the coaches. Um, it's been about five years, right? Probably longer than that, but yeah. I've okay. been, been, been back in. Okay. Yeah. All right, so almost a decade he's been coaching. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he gets the, the charge of coaching Elijah this year, this version of football, too. And so, uh, so uh, I'm saying this openly because I want you to remind me of it. One, uh, one we want to get out there and support these kids, okay? They play right here uh, at the high school football stadium on Saturdays. They run games from 8 in the morning to about noon. It's different age groups. And um, I would just sit on the side of the street just watch them play. But it'll probably be good to have more people in the stands this year, okay? So let's get out there and support them. And then I saw that they needed uh, sponsorships. And so um, can you let Coach Miller know that we'll be talking, figure out a way, the way the church can help sponsor a kid or a team or something like that. Because it does cost to play, right? And so we want to be a part of that, y'all. It's amazing. Uh, I took Elijah to his first day of conditioning yesterday. And they didn't have pads and helmets on, they were just conditioning. But I saw about 40, 50 boys who otherwise have nothing else to do out there training hard Saturday morning, getting it in. And to show you the impact that it has, y'all know Elijah. Elijah is Elijah. And uh, Friday night, I surprised and said, okay, uh, son, you going to football tomorrow. His eyes got real big. He's been asking to play for a year. And I said, okay, get up at 7.30. We got to leave. Got to get up at 7.30. Elijah don't get up for nobody or nothing. <laughs> nothing. I come walking out the bedroom, getting my, put my shirt on, and it's 7.28. He's standing at the door with his shoes on. I'm ready. And like, so I said, okay. So, you know, you know. so that alone, but, you know, this might be something worth pouring into, all right? So uh, if, you, if you can, they start the first week of July. If you can, let's get out there and let's support these kids, all right? Is that okay? Uh, John 14, 27, Jesus said these words, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be in trouble or afraid. Old church used to sing, this peace that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away from me. Jesus said, I'm giving you peace that the world cannot give. So that means they can't take it away as well. Jesus goes on to say in John 16, 33, I've told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. Somebody say, in this world, you will have trouble. That's just part of the nature. You're going to have some trouble in this world. He says, but take heart, I've overcome the world. He says, he's overcome. So for, I just need about 20 minutes. Tell you later, all I do is wait. All I do is win. See, so, so somebody knows the song and they got ready to go. All I do is win, 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 I'm mad at y'all. All I do is, is, is win. Jesus was preparing to leave and he gave them this assurance. He says, take note, I'm leaving you peace. He says, but in John 16, you're going to have trouble. But I told you in John 14, you're going to have peace. I told you in John 16, you're going to have trouble. Law of first mission. What I told you first is going to stand regardless of what comes after. I promised you peace, but you're going to have trouble. But at the end of the day, regardless of how much trouble comes your way, you still are going to have peace. Isn't it something how Jesus gave us an assurance that we'll have peace even in trouble? But for some reason, whenever we find trouble, we lose our peace. That gets, it gets kind of shifted right now, right? He promised us peace. If he, if he promised us peace, that means that no matter what we're going through, we're going to have peace. Now, what he didn't promise was that he didn't promise that everything will be easy. Anybody have it the easy their whole life, haven't gone through anything, haven't struggled through anything? If that's you, please see me at the service. I need you to lay hands on me. All right? All right? But some of us, no matter how much we smile, no matter how much we pat and encourage other people, some of us, no matter how many times we get up off the ground and pick ourselves up and clean ourselves up, straighten out our wigs and put on our makeup and get our face shaved and all that kind of stuff, some of us go through some stuff that nobody really has to know about. There, 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 there's, there, there, there's some of us, there's some of us that are this close to a breakdown right when we pull up to the church and we get ourselves together just to come inside the building. Other times, there's some of us that are this close to a breakdown at home 
children, we got to put our face together for our kids and for our spouses. There's some of us that are this close to stepping and going off, but we know that we need the peace that passes all understanding to rest on us before I go into this job. Have you ever prayed, Lord, if you don't move in my spirit right now, before I talk in, I'm going to slap everybody, but I'm going to. I thought that was just me. Pull up, pull up to the staff, me, Lord, if you don't touch me on the freeway. Because before I, like, if I get off the freeway and you ain't touch me, it's going to be smoke and it's sleeping. Yeah. Sometimes we go through a lot of things. But Jesus says you don't have to respond to your trial. You don't have to respond to your storm. You don't have to act out of character when life seems to be unfair. You don't have to snap just because they mistreated you. You don't have to go off just because they talked about you because I'm giving you peace. As a matter of fact, when you choose to snap, when you choose to go off, when you choose to act out of character, what you're telling me is thank you for your peace, Jesus. I don't need that really handle it myself. Imagine telling Jesus who gave you the gift of peace that you don't need the gift. He tells you, if I give you anything, you turn around and tell me you don't want it. You ain't never getting another good from me. That's just how Lord God help me with that. I know the frustrated with that. But imagine telling Jesus, who says, I'm leaving you peace. I'm leaving you this gift of peace. That when you work the storms and trials, you don't have to flip out because you have peace. Now let me help you before I get to James. If the beginning is peace, and the middle is trial, and the end result is guaranteed peace, should that let you know that no matter what you go through, all you do is win? Yeah. yeah. Kind of get a little bit of a question that irritates us. Like, do we really believe the God of the Bible when he says things in the Bible? Let's go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. When you get there, we're going to verse 2. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, Consider an opportunity for greater joy. For trouble of any kind come your way. Any kind of trouble. Financial trouble. Consider an opportunity for greater joy. Relationship trouble. Consider an opportunity for greater joy. Church drama. Not at this church, Missouri family, this other church. Not here. We got to go out here. It don't happen here at all, right? Y'all look at me, look straight at me. <laughs> Church trouble. Uh-uh. Consider an opportunity for great joy. Bad kids. It's an opportunity for great joy. I'm going to come down your road in a minute. I'm going to get there in a minute. Don't worry. I'm going to go. I'm going to get there. Struggling with addiction. It's an opportunity for great joy. Almost losing your temper at the day. It's an opportunity for, 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 great, for, for, great, for great joy. Somebody cuts you off on your way to work and you want to hurt it. It is an opportunity for great joy. It's not an opportunity to put them the bird. It's an opportunity for great joy. It's an opportunity. He says, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Can I help us? When we come into trials, they're not yet meant to take us out. They're meant to test our faith. This is why Jesus said before he left, he says, listen, Simon, the devil was to sit you as weak, but I pray that your faith fail you not. If we look at the, if we look at trials the way Jesus wants us to see them, we'll understand, we'll stop saying the devil's messing with me. The devil don't want you, he wants your faith. And as long as we keep thinking we are the target, we're going to miss the whole opportunity to count it great joy. Because the enemy does not want you, he wants your faith. And so that's why the scripture says that you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. When the enemy tests my faith through a trial, I now have an opportunity to grow endurance in Jesus. Y'all know what endurance is? It's the ability to run longer. It's the ability to move, go, go beyond. He says, listen, you need to be tested so your endurance can grow. Anybody glad that they were tested this past season in life? Okay, watch this. Anybody excited that they're going to be tested later? Yeah. Right. Inside over here. That's fine. <laughs> they scared. Yeah. Look over there and tell them, if you're scared, go to church. Right. You have an opportunity for great joy when trials come. Yeah. When you fully wrap your mind around this, you get to come out of your prayer closet and say, bring it on, devil. Whatever you got for me, I'm ready. You tried this last week, didn't work. I dare you to try it again. Why? Because every time you attack me, 
I get closer to God. Every time you know something, I get stronger in the faith. Every time you come me sideways, I get deeper and deeper into the word and deeper into the prayer. Come on, devil, that's what you got. The Bible says Satan's going to and fro looking for whom he made the power. I'm looking for some people so full of faith saying, devil, I wish you would try me this week. Yeah. All right, okay, okay. It says, so let it grow, verse 4. So when you, for when you endure, when you have endurance and it's fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. The word is not talking about perfect and complete, meaning you'll be sinless and lacking nothing, meaning you won't have, uh, you, you won't have a need in life. He's saying that your faith will be so solid, it'll almost be unshakable. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. so you'll get a resolve that says, I don't care how much money I got in the bank, you'll never go on broke. And it says, you don't have to resolve. It says, I don't care what the doctor says about my blood work. I'm just going to heal it over my life. You don't have to resolve. It says, I don't care if nobody appreciates me. I'll pat myself on the back because as long as God's got me, I'm good all by myself. You don't have to resolve. But you won't get there unless you allow your faith to be tested. And your faith can't be tested unless you allow yourself to go through some trials. Let's get down to verse 12. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. One of the ways that the enemy will test you is through temptation. That's one of the main ways they'll test you is through temptation. If you go all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3, he's the same enemy. He used the same tactics. He knew that Eve wanted something that she should have touched in the first place. But he presented her with something and twisted the word of God and tempted her to go after that go after that fruit. I almost said apple. Go after that piece of fruit. Yeah. He's up to the same tactics from Genesis chapter 3 all the way to now for 23. Nothing has changed. But temptation, that movie, I love that movie, Fighting Temptations. I think I talked about it before. And it's, I love that movie, Fighting Temptations, because when we fight temptations, that gives us a chance to grow in our faith. Missouri people, I'm giving you a warning. Buckle your seatbelts. In about 10 to 12 minutes, honey buns may get in the chat. I don't know. I'm just telling you. The, all right. All right. Okay. Honey buns, the tree, the stack. No, no. Hey, Pastor, how you doing? I slept a little good. 
if you know the smart waters you can find to get to, I said, really? I said, let me go get another. I go back to my fourth smart water, come back. And I promise you, they weren't there 20 seconds ago. <laughs> but for the time I left the register to go get my other smart water and come back, there was the hostess display right here on the side. So I'm checking, what's this? <laughs> Oh, well, Pastor, they're on sale. If you get two, you get two free. I said, so, what's the phone call? I'm trying to negotiate. I said, never mind, get my stuff and get out of here, right? When you fight temptations, your faith has an opportunity to grow. And I always, and the reason I pick on sweets is because I think when we talk about sin in church, we only think it's the big ones that we call, you know, the sexual and, the, and all that kind of stuff. Let's bring it on down to everybody's level here real quick. We all got something that we got to fight. We got something that gets us every time. It catches our eye every time, no matter what we're doing. And for me, it's just it's, it's sweet. It's just what it is. And so I'm sitting there, I got the truck, and I started drinking water because now, again, I committed to fast. And I hope the Holy Spirit say, you see how quick you were to get your eyes off this fast on something that's your flesh water. Yeah, yeah. It was at that moment that while I'm fasting and interceding for somebody else that my faith grew in that instant just like that. Y'all, do you not understand, do you not understand that when you fight the temptations, you have a chance to grow. But you also have to understand that Satan is only using temptations to get your faith. Disconnect you from Jesus. Get a little bit further. Uh, James 1, verse 13. And remember, when you're being tempted, don't say God is tempted. God is never tempted to be wrong. God is never tempted. Ooh, God is tested, but he's not. He's never tempted to be wrong. He's never tempted you to be wrong. But God, but, 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 but he, he's never tempted to be wrong. He never tempted anyone else. Verse 14. Temptation comes from our old desires, which enticed us and dragged us away. These desires are giving birth to simple actions, and when we are allowed to grow, we allow sin to grow, it gives birth to death. So here it is to say, listen, not only is God not tempted me, but really, all Satan is doing is trying to convince me to get something I already want in the first place. So maybe, 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 instead of rebuking Satan first, I need to ask God to find what's in me that wants that so bad. Because if I rebuke Satan, then he's going to leave me alone on Monday. But the desire is still there Monday night. If I rebuke him Tuesday, he's going to leave me alone Tuesday, but the desire is still there Tuesday night. Anybody ever pray the prayer, Lord, search me, and find anything in me that's not like you, take it away. Whatever it is at the core of my being that's causing me to want something that you don't want for me, Lord, take the taste out my mouth. several times before, but I think it's so profound and necessary today. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. It says, if you think you're standing strong, be careful not to fall. That's verse 12. No faith that because you shouted around the church and spoke to somebody's tongue on Sunday that you're too strong to fall on Monday. Don't you dare think that because you have a title now that you're too strong to fall to any temptation. Don't you dare think that. When you start to become entitled and full of yourself, you make yourself a prime suspect for the enemy. Verse 13. You guys got verse 13? Somebody read verse 13. Whoever's got it. And remember when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempted. Ooh, first part is tempted. Okay. You're James, you're James. Okay. Okay. It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> Right, first Corinthians 10, that's okay. 10, 13. Yes, ma'am. There are no temptation taken you, but such as is common man. And God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be above that. We are able. But the temptation also make a way to escape, that he may be able to bear sin. Two things happen here. There is no temptation that's come unto you. That nobody's ever seen before. 
It says nothing new. Now, why is that important? Because if you go all the way to Hebrews chapter 4, it says that we have a high priest who walked this earth in flesh and was tempted in every way that we were. And so when it says that there's no temptation that's, that, that's not known to man, what it says is there's nothing new under the sun. Remember I told you, Satan has been doing the same tricks since Genesis chapter 3. Same. Same. same stuff. If you don't know, that's because you haven't read the Bible. He's been doing the same stuff. And so now there's no temptation that can jump on me that's foreign to me. Matter of fact, Jesus knows all about it. Because he walked this earth, was tempted every way, yet he did not sin. But then it goes on to say that God is so faithful that when we are tempted, he will provide a way of escape for us to get out of the temptation. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to walk into it. He will provide a way of escape. What does the way of escape look like? Well, 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 he might just tell you to go. Way of escape. You might just have to pray. Anybody ever pray that he could have the Lord help me? I was at the gym two days ago, three days ago, and everybody knows when I'm working out, don't bother me. I'm going to leave it alone. If I got my headphones off, I got a brief minute to talk. One of the acceptable things we can talk about, we can talk about sports, just to say the Lakers stuff. We got a problem, all right? <laughs> we can talk about that, right? We can talk about family and all that kind of stuff. But one thing I don't do, I don't engage in political conversation. It's, it's fruitless, it's pointless. I've never seen anybody change their political ideologies based on my argument ever in life. It's not that worth it. And so a gentleman comes up, and one guy has on a Biden Harris whole outfit. I don't even know where to get those. The whole outfit. The other guy has a Make America Great hat on, all that kind of stuff. I'm in the middle of these two opposing factions. <laughs> and I'm just trying to get my last set of dumbbell presses out the way so I can go. And so I get up, I get, you know, if you have a bench press, don't go, so put them on your knee, you're ready to raise them back. Before I get ready to raise them back, the guy on the left, I feel like Jesus with the crook with the center of each side of the cross. Like, I was in the middle of a mess. And I get ready to lay back, and he says, hey, can you tell the sissy over there to give me the dumbbell? I'm on the bench. I get the ball. You're ready to go back. The other guy, I heard what he said, let him know, so now I'm upset. Because y'all two grown men trying to put me in the middle of something. So I put the dumbbells down politely. And I said, look, whatever problem you know I got with each other, y'all should probably go outside. Or better yet, how about you take my bench? Let me get on this side. That's where I'm not going to put y'all right next to each other. <laughs> the gentleman said, this is the said, yeah, yeah, uh huh, yeah, yeah. You are the black Democrats. You don't know what to take your place. <laughs> In my mind. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> we're about to wrestle a little bit. But I had to say, Lord, help me. Send your spirit right now. So I can lift this weight as opposed to throwing this weight. <laughs> Y'all know what the moment the Lord called my prayers. I was able to get my bag, collect my things, and go work out on someone else. What I'm saying is sometimes the way of escape is for you just to pray. And if you pray, this is how great the Holy Spirit is. If you just call on him in the heat of the moment, he is just that great, that gracious to come and get on your lap, get in your seat, pull you up out of somewhere, and push you somewhere. Why? Because the Holy Spirit knows how to intercede for us when we're weak, we're not strong enough to handle ourselves. And now you all know me, I like, I like to be physical. We could have had a wrestling match in there. But God got up and shook his hand and said, thank you, God bless you. But the Holy Spirit had to come in and intercede for us. Some of us only fall to temptation because we don't look for the escape routes. You know that if a fire happened right now in this building, some of us would panic, some of us would cry, some of us would be on Facebook. We ain't here. We won't go all that respect. But there's some of us who will look for the exit routes. Because we know where there's an exit sign, that means there's a safe passage out way. The same thing happens in the spirit. When it seems like the world around you is on fire, all you have to do is look for the exit route. That is where the escape is. Y'all okay? Yeah. Yeah. Stop thinking about honey buns. They all sell. <laughs> number two, number two, number two, number two, number two. You have to learn how to fight with the word. Fight with the word of God. Satan is not afraid of your tongue. Right. It's not. It's not. Say he's not afraid of your title. 
He said he doesn't care what church he goes to. He doesn't care who your pastor or bishop is. He doesn't care if you're out or in front of him. He does not care about any of that. The only thing that gets him driven away from you is the word of God. James 4 verse 7 says, humble yourself before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That word resist does not mean run from him. It means because that, think about it. Resist the devil, he'll flee. So that means run from him. Well, that doesn't make sense. Because if I ran for him, that makes him run for me. No, if I run for him, he's chasing me. That word resist means stand flat-footed and oppose him. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus the fasted. 40 days, 40 nights. He was weak and vulnerable. Here comes Satan. Now it's time to jump on This was Jesus. Remember the scripture said that he faced everything that we face and he did not sin. This is Jesus now being tempted. You know temptation is really most effective when we're at our lowest and we're most vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now Jesus is most vulnerable at this particular moment. And here comes Satan. And the Bible says Satan tempted him three times. And if you read it for yourself in Mark chapter 4, everything that Jesus replied with can be found in Deuteronomy. Right, yeah. Meaning that he answered him back with the word of God. Yeah. I don't care how many scriptures you know, but if you don't know any, you better learn one. Right. Because it's the word of God that's going to drive Satan out of your presence. And so if you don't have a Bible and you need one, let us know. We'll get you a Bible today. If you, if you want to find out how to get it online, let us know. We'll show you online how you can get to it. But you need to learn one scripture. And if I were you, I start with one, and I get deep into that one. Don't study for the live. Study for the depth of it. Get deep into that one. And to the point where you're in that one, and now you're looking at your Bible and it says, oh, it's connected to this one over here. And it takes you to another one. And before you know it, you have a whole arsenal of scriptures right now. See, the thing about David and Goliath that nobody really talks about is Goliath fell with one stone. Yeah. But David had five, just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Just in case this big old thing don't fall on the first one, I got four more in my pocket. Here's the thing. Get your one scripture, but get to the point where you got four or five in your pocket. And if Satan comes running at you, you're going to have to have rapid fire. Yeah. Yes, and Sunday morning, they don't do it. <laughs> Sunday morning, we come together because we love God, and we love the family of God. Satan is really far of waiting in the parking lot for you to get out of church. <laughs> Some of us got to church today, got out the car. I'll leave the ACO for you. Come on out and go by. God bless you. You better have a strategy in your spirit to so fight this enemy. And the only way you can fight it is through the word. I don't want you to raise your hand because I don't want anybody to feel embarrassed. But just think about it. How many times did you open your Bible this week? Think about it. Now think about how many times you open Facebook. How many times you open TikTok this week? How many times you pick up the phone and text somebody and hold a full conversation? Mm -hmm. I sat there and held the phone while the bubble stayed there for 45 seconds while they were typing. I'm sorry, Andrew, you can tell my eyes, I have no problem. Uh, but how many of us, how many of us are thinking, I'm thinking about that, thinking about that, thinking about that. We open by asking, how many understand that we're going to go through some things? Yes. And we now understand the only way to survive things we go through is with the Word of God. Yes. So what if you just keep getting beat season after season simply because you want to open the Word? Mm -hmm. Number three, count it all joy. Have joy when you go through some stuff. Nobody should have to know you're going through. Right. Because happiness is external. It says that when I'm not happy, you can see it on my face. But joy is internal. Joy says, I don't care what the temperature is outside, I still got joy in my spirit. Right. Right. Joy says, I don't care who does not like me. I don't care what bills won't get paid this month. I don't care if they're saying go repossess the car. I don't care if there's, I still have joy in my spirit. Right. But it's bigger than that. Joy really shows God that you have faith that all things will work together. But if you're those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Joy really shows God that you believe that no weapon formed in this me shall prosper. Joy really shows God that I know that no matter what I'm going through, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Joy shows God that no matter how bad it may get, all I'm going to do is win. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Joy shows God by faith that I am more than a conqueror. Nobody should be able to shake you from 
prove that true. And so I count it all joy. Why do I count it all joy? Because when I go through, my faith has a chance to grow. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Olivia and Elijah, they lived with us for a year today. We just had a Olivia told me at the refrigerator last night, it's been a year. A year what? Since you and since we lived with you. I said, all right. Okay. Yeah, I said, all right. Come here. But when Olivia first, when they first moved in, we have this dog named Benji. Benji. Benji's a big old head raw out. Benji's just under three years old now. And he's huge, Sister Phyllis. When I say he's huge, if he's, when he stands up to greet me, he stands up on his back feet, and his paws rest on my shoulders. That's how big Benji is. We have about a six foot fence around the house. We live on the corner. So when people, I always tell people, if you walk with your dog, please walk across the street. I walk where I want to, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I sit in the truck and wait. Five, four, <laughs> and you go, right? Because Benji took his high legs and jumped up and his whole up half of his body and over the fence. That's it. He's just that big. And so when they first got to us, every time the Olivia walked to the house, Benji, he's going crazy. Well, they why? He's in Mark Bates or something. Olivia didn't want to come to the room where he was at. Because she said, no, he's no, he's no, right. no, baby, he just don't know you, all that kind of stuff. Time goes by, now Olivia meets Benji. She goes in the room where he is. He's still barking a little bit, but it's okay. Over time, over time, she got enough faith to know this is my house. I'm not a stranger here. You my dog. Right? You my, you my dog. Right? Over time, Dylan was coming in the house every week with him barking at her. She kept standing, she kept standing, she kept standing to where she has enough faith to know that I'm safe and secure because this is my house. You're not going to run me out of my house. When I go through things, if I don't run from the problem, I run to the problem. And I let God bring me through it. Each time, my faith gets a little bit stronger and stronger and stronger to where when the enemy jumps in, I don't have to run anymore. I have enough faith that no matter what's going on, I'm safe and secure. And because of that, I got joy in my spirit. So really quick, back to David and Goliath. David is now, 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 that story you're talking about the trial, biggest trial of his life. Here, here, here's what happens. The Bible says that Goliath roars at David, and David runs toward Goliath. All right. When was the last time you ran toward the trial? <laughs> Read it for yourself, First Samuel 16 and 17. David ran towards the Bible. Meaning, I don't care how big and bad you are, storm, trial, whatever it is, I got joy in my spirit that gives me a blessed assurance to know that no matter what you're trying to insult me with, greater is he that's in me than he that's over there with you. I'm running towards it. Sometimes I'm going to run toward the trial just to prove how big and bad my God is. Yeah. And here's the final thing, number four. You just have to say this to every morning when you get up in this trial. If you're in one, if you're headed to one, if you're coming out of one, when you go back to heaven, I can do all things through Christ. Yes. Yeah. That strengthens me. There's three parts of that scripture. I, and me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can do all things. What's it all? All. Oh. That is everything, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. Through Christ, that strengthens me. I love the part that strengthens me. Because the right trial can zap your walk and strength. Yeah, the right situation with your child can zap your walk and strength. You ain't been there? Yeah, that child is dressed. I mean, you can't even pray. That child can got on your last nerve that much. Lord, the only thing I'm afraid is, Lord, you better get him. Lord, you better get him right <laughs> now. The wrong report at the doctor can zap you out of all of your strength. Yeah. Sometimes you can feel isolated, depleted, depressed, to where a phrase song is not going to work, where there's no scripture that can comfort you. Nobody can come put their arm around you and tell you it's going to be okay because you just can't receive it. Sometimes it can get that dark in the middle of a trial. Where you know the songs and you can come to church and the spirit can move and you can be numb to it because you're just so dark in that dark place. When I say you have to declare that scripture, I don't want you to focus on I can do all things. I want you to focus on Christ that strengthens me. Yeah, yeah. Because it's in him that I move and I breathe and I have my bed. Yeah. 
not by might, not by, yeah, y'all not hear what I'm saying? He says, but by my spirit. It's through his spirit that I find his strength. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you all have been there to where you had to put on a mask and have the faith like you had strength that you didn't really have. And if somebody walked by you and was booing, you probably just fall because you really have nothing in you at that moment. But that scripture says he strengthens you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why do I count on all joy? Because he strengthens me. Yeah, yeah. I count on all joy because when it looks like I have nothing left in the tank, when it looks like I'm on my last legs, when it looks like I'm moving on fumes, when it looks like that all hope is lost, he strengthens me. Yeah. There's a story where his strength kind of shows up. I don't know if you've heard it before, but there's a story. There, there's a story. And I'm not close to that. There's a story that shows that when all hope is lost, he strengthens us. There's a, there's a story about this innocent man, man never done no wrong. Innocent man, they, they show the story on, on TNT, the movies, TBN, all of them. Man had done no wrong, yet he was accused of doing everything. <laughs> and in the movie, what happens is, what happens is he has to go to trial. And he goes to trial and he gets convicted for crimes he didn't even do. And in the story, what happens is they treat him as the worst criminal of all time. And he's innocent. But yet still, he never proclaimed his innocence, he just took the punishment. Mm -hmm. And so in the movie, if you really watch it, you really pay attention, what happens is they give him the worst of the worst punishment. Yeah. And they hang him on the cross. Mm -hmm. And when they hang him on his cross, they pierce him. They mock him. They spit on him. They abuse him. All his followers are watching because they're wondering what's going to happen because all the other trials before, they saw him come out victorious. And now they said, okay, maybe this is it. Maybe this is the one thing he can't overcome. And in the story, they say, they, they show how eventually at the midnight hour, he passes, he goes, he gives up his spirit, he dies. And to make a mockery out of him, the story says they pierce him in the side because they didn't want to break his bones like everybody else, so they pierce him in the side. And when they pierce him in the side, they were shocked because blood and water came out of his side. Now, that's funny that the blood came out, what they didn't realize, and this is how the story goes, legend tells it, what they didn't realize is when the blood came out of their side, they really messed up because of the enemy meant for bad, God spent for good. Because when the blood came out, the scripture says, without blood, there'd be no remission of sin. When the blood came out, salvation came to the world. I don't know if y'all read the story, but I'm going to be But then the water came out, and they were kind of perplexed. Why is water coming? What's the purpose of water coming out? Who is this person? What they didn't understand that the man that they killed was all God and all spirit at the same time. Yeah. And so when they pierced him, not only the blood came out, but his spirit poured out. And we saw that in Acts chapter 2 of the day of Pentecost. But this is what was crazy about it. Uh, on, on, and, and depending on who you talk to, some people say it was on Thursday, some people say it was Saturday. Let's just say on the second day. On the second day, all hope was lost. It seems like the enemy had won. Come on. Because now his followers are now doubting that he was really the Messiah that he said he was. Now the soldiers are cheering because they finally got rid of this thing, this person that came to cause division. Now the religious people are happy because they can go and bind people with religion. And while again, all hope was lost. And they threw a party out of the stone. And then early on Sunday morning, it depends on I me, mean, you got to read it for yourself. I'm watching the movie, you got you to watch it for yourself. But early on Sunday morning, they went to, they went to the to, 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 to study the grave. They said, we got to make sure he's still in there. And they showed up, and not only was he not in there, but the stone that covered him was rolled away. Yeah. They said, well, what happened? Two angels sitting on the rock. The angels sitting on the rock said, what is wrong with y'all? Why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? Didn't he tell me he was going to get out of here? Yeah. And so they had to ask some questions. They had to ask some questions. And the answer to the question was simply this. When all hope was lost, yeah. he found strength in himself. Yeah. And he was able to raise himself up out of that grave yeah. and prove that he lives today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If his strength was powerful enough to pull him out of death, hell, and the grave, don't you think it's strong enough to pull you out of depression? Yeah. Yeah. It is strong enough to pull us from recession. It is strong enough to pull us from suicidal thoughts and dark
speak to you and let you know one, there is no such thing as a poor believer. There is no such thing as a losing season. You might have a losing moment. We don't have losing seasons. Because even in bad seasons, God is still faithful to us. Even in bad seasons, God is still faithful to us. If that's you, would you please come to this altar? We just want to touch and agree with you. That losing shall not be your portion on this. No, not today. Not today. Is there another? You feel like you're a losing season. Ah, uh -uh, losing. That's not it. It's not going to end for you this way. You still got life to live. You got souls to reach. You got kingdom work to do. Come on. Is that another? Is that another? Is that another? Is that another? There is no losing season. No losing season. No losing season. Because I'm short of breath this morning. I need our prayer team to come stand with me, please. No losing season. As we lay hands, I'm going to speak this over your lives. The moment you start to change your confession, your outlook's going to change. There is no losing season. It's just your faith is being stretched and tested, that's all. But if you hang on, if you hold on, if you hang on, you're going to see the goodness of the Lord show up on your behalf. David says to me, he said, look, listen, he said, I would have made it if I didn't believe I'd see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What he said was, I would have gave up if I didn't believe that God was going to show up while I was still alive. God is about to show up on your behalf this week and start to flip everything around. Here's the greatest part about it. By this time next Sunday, somebody's going to have a testimony in this place. By this time next Sunday, somebody's going to have a testimony in this place. Now, for everybody else, I want to encourage you. Even if God doesn't allow the situation to change, He will change you in the situation. To where now you will turn around and look at this thing and realize it's not as bad as this thing. That's the trick of the game. It will make you believe that the walls are closing in on you. Nobody can hear you calling out for help. God is not listening to you. He hasn't heard your prayers. He made too many mistakes. Satan is alive. The Lord is still here. He's not forsaking you. He's just waiting for you to call out. When you cry out, that's when you show up. So today, we're going to touch and agree that by this time next week, there shall be a testimony. If you don't want to share it with the church, share it with somebody. Get on Facebook and let Facebook go. The enemy tried it, but he failed. Father, we thank you for victory in Jesus' name. We thank you for victory even while they're in the middle of the trial. Lord, let them look themselves in the mirror today and declare that they are winners. They are champions. They are more than conquerors. Greater are you that send them than you that be that send the world. Strengthen them even now, God. Dry every tear and then substitute them with a harvest of joy. Strengthen them even now to be able to stand to the very people, the very situations that are trying to shake them up and declare, I shall live and not die. I shall stand and not fall. I shall be stronger. I shall be better and not better. I shall be not despised in the name of Jesus. Strength now. Strength now. Wisdom now.
birthing things right now. Right? Oh, yeah. There are things being birthed as we saw. Yes, Lord. So here at the altar, we're not going through our frustration. You're in labor spiritually. It hurts because he's trying to birth something. He's yes, trying to birth something. He's trying to birth something. You're in the right place at the right time. Don't think you're not. Don't let the enemy forget that you're not. God is getting ready to birth something out of some of you. Your, your only job, your only job is that of an expected mother. Yes. Be very careful who you allow to touch what you're carrying. Yes. In this season, be very careful to who you allow to touch yes. what you're carrying. God is good. Parker, 
I, you know, my Kayla is taller than I am now, and she's going to high school, and she was just running around the church as two, a two-year-old, and it's amazing how our kids grow up so fast. Amen. Well, we're so proud of you all, and we have a special announcement because we're so godly proud of this man. Our own elder, Jay Taylor, has graduated from the College of the Desert, is it College of the Desert? High school through, through, and he Adult school. school, he has graduated, amen. <laughs> Bless us and keep us. We ask that you may shine upon us and be gracious to us. 
We ask, Father God, all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Third is this.